In a world first, Melbourne researchers have found a way to grow kidney disease in a dish which is raising hopes of a cure. The trial suggests patients with the disease could get personalised drug treatments with just the scrape of a few skin cells. Mary Gearan reports. Hi Jenny, come in and take a seat. Jenny Armstrong's medical fate lies with one of two things, dialysis or a transplant. That's because she has polycystic kidney disease, a genetic condition throughout her family that claimed her mother Merle after seven years of dialysis. She was very scared, I could tell that, but she's a very strong, stoic woman and, um, you know, she just did what she had to do. But if I could think that there would be an alternative to that for myself down the track, I, I'm happy to, um, you know be involved with research that could possibly one day mean that um, dialysis was a thing of the past. Jenny Armstrong may get her wish. She's part of research that may finally offer a remarkable alternative to sufferers of kidney disease and others. I think you will find a rapid revolution in diagnostics. I think if you look 20 years time, look backwards, you'd say, well, wasn't that pretty crude the way they were thinking? Uh, but I can see the, the beginnings of some really radical changes now. In a world first, in trials at the Monash Medical Centre, researchers have been taking skin cells from people like Jenny Armstrong and making them into her own kidney cells. Well, my first reaction was that they made a very pretty pattern <laughs> and uh, I was really impressed to think that that was part of my DNA. The photo was sent to me as, you know, to say, here, look, you know, this is what your little piece of skin has, has grown into. Dr Sharon Ricardo and her team at the Immunology and Stem Cell Laboratories at Monash University have done what scientists have been aiming for in the few years since the idea of reprogramming adult cells emerged. They've managed to take the cells back in time to become stem cells, or officially induced pluripotent stem cells or IPS cells. They can then be made into kidney cells. This means that we can grow these kidney cells that are genetically matched to these patients in Definitely. So we can get a disease in a dish. We can study the disease. We can test drugs, both new drugs and, and um, future drugs, on these cells and try to learn about the patient's kidney disease that we'd never been able to before. The power of these things is to unlock the secrets of disease and then start tailoring with really smart therapies. The big advantages will potentially come in cost and safety because therapeutic drugs could be screened at first in petri dishes, not on humans. And the technique sidesteps controversy about stem cells taken from embryos. The same laboratories have also announced they've achieved the same thing with cells from people with multiple sclerosis. The breakthrough has gotten the nod of approval from Australian stem cell pioneer Dr Alan Trounson, now head of the California Institute for Regenerative Medicine, or CIRM, that's backing the research. With IPS cells, you can take the cell and then turn it into a, a primitive cell that doesn't have the condition and then watch how it develops that pathology in the dish. And so you can tell one person may be different to another and you start to understand that the disease is very differently. The ultimate prize for scientists isn't just about drug screening, but also genetically altering the stem cells and then replanting disease-free cells, or the molecules they produce, back into the patient that potentially offers a cure. But there are still questions to be resolved. One of the dangers in the reprogramming is whether that cell is now altered from its normal state and in fact could be recognised as foreign by the immune system and create a sort of a self-destruction or an autoimmune disease. This announcement could be seen as a call for investors to keep faith in stem cell research after last month's shock announcement from the world's largest and oldest stem cell company, Geron Corporation, to quit the field, abandoning its work on spinal injuries. The reason given was financial pressures. And these, these stem cells um, can be multipotent. It's also put the spotlight onto Professor Trounson's research centre as it prepares to ask Californian voters for billions of dollars more funding. For his part, Professor Trounson says he doesn't believe investors are now deserting the field. There's real opportunities here, apart from spinal injury, uh, correction of the blindness, uh, dry, what they call dry macular degeneration, uh, treatment of stroke. 
cardiac disease. Uh, um, there's, a, there's a wide range of, of, of opportunities here and, and the companies and the institutions are moving on very strongly. They're, they're not, there's no noticeable decline at all. I think the optimism evolving from stem cell research is really quite dramatic. I'm very optimistic that these will have a huge impact on disease in the future, but time is required. Jenny Armstrong would simply like any hope to be pursued for the generations that follow her. If what I am doing can help lots of people in my family, then also other families can benefit from it as well. Mary Gearan reports.